Hello, and welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. I'm Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. And I'm Chelsea from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And we are here today. This episode is airing on Monday, January 29th, 2024. And it is a listener questions episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super excited. It's been a little while since it we had one been. of these. So this is good. We are actually going to start with Chelsea sharing her quilts. Yes. And I figured since strawberry lemonade yardage was being shipped, that I would share some of my strawberry lemonade quilts again. The on the wall is Sunshine Girl, which if you know the story last time I shared is kind of inspired by my mom's love for the sun and all things beachy. This is fat quarter friendly, one of my favorite quilts that shows all of the different color combinations that can work together with strawberry lemonade. And you can kind of see this alternate looking block in the quilt as well. Love this one. It's a very large quilt and just really great color combos that shows everything off. Yeah, I love this one. In fact, we actually just taped a live stream earlier yeah. today with Fat Quarter Shop and I shared how I have a picture of this quilt and I love looking at it to get ideas for my blockheads blocks. <laughs> <laughs> so the combinations are so fun. And on the table, we have Botanical Remix. And mom is going to show the boxed kits arrived. Guys, they turned out so, so good. I was really excited to hear that this one was going to be a boxed kit with Moda. So definitely look for your at your favorite shops online or local brick and mortars that might have it available. It turned out beautifully. And then I have, so the quilt is on the table, but it is fat eighth friendly with yardage with yardage as well. And I just adore this quilt because there's four different types of star blocks in it and really shows off those greens from the collection. And both of these quilts were quilted by Marion. Yeah, I love them both. The quilt behind you is your Hearts at Home too, right? Oh, yeah. On the ladder. And mom pieced this one. She also made a mini version because you had fabrics left over. Right. The honey bun friendly and hearts at home too is a favorite pattern. And it was, I really was ready to put it into a booklet form and update it and make some changes. It turned out really, really pretty. And mom did such a good job on it. So I was appreciative. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And then behind Billy is my flowers for Emma quilt. And well, what about the one behind you? Did you mention that? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Co- and then yeah. when I when I go, then we'll okay. talk about mine. Yeah, Coastal Summer Medallion is on the ladder behind me. It's a strawberry lemonade kind of day. <laughs> yeah, I was going to mention because and we need to make sure we always mention every, especially now with my camera, even the quilt behind me, which we'll get to that in a, a bit. <laughs> but I, I keep noticing a lot of people are like, what's the quilt behind Billy? What's the one on the far wall behind Billy? What's the ones on the ladder? So. We're gonna. I'm gonna make sure that we have everything listed every single episode in case if we don't mention one, then you can go in the description and find everything. Okay. Okay. So, would you do you want to talk about the one behind me now? So yeah, the one behind you is flowers for Emma. It was originally in American Patchwork and Quilting, and now it's just available as a single standalone pattern. And the question I get asked about this one all the time is. What what is the fabric collection? What where can I get the backgrounds? And it is just scrappy. It is from my stash, and it was all different backgrounds from all different companies and and designers. And the same thing with the blocks. And it, it really is a favorite block quilt of mine because some of those blocks were made all over the world. Really, I was on a cruise when I was <laughs> making some of them, mm. and uh, as I was traveling to teach in different parts of the United States, I would make blocks. So. That's my most international quilt, I guess. And then behind, the, on the far wall, is Yeah, above the body. sewing machine. Yeah, yeah, above the sewing machine. I, I put that in here for Valentine's Day, and it's with our Sincerely Yours collection. Wow, this one, though, really is like the Sisterhood of Traveling Pants quilt. Yes. It's very... Yeah, those blocks have been... seen places. Yep, they've been... I worked on those blocks in, you know, Jamaica, <laughs> Cozumel, <laughs> The open sea, <laughs> as well as places like Oregon and Texas and Wisconsin. So I love yeah. that. 
Okay, I have a fun find. Is this the for that? Should I do the fun find? Yeah. So the first fun find is this quilt magic premium quilting and crafting spray. And my friend Nancy Lane told me about it. And this is a great alternative if you don't want to heavily starch your fabrics, but you want to spray them with something. Yeah. And I tried it out just for the first time yesterday with a log cabin block I was piecing for a video. And I'm sold. I'm going to use, you just lightly spray your fabric. You don't soak it. And you then iron with a dry iron and then piece as usual and it just it adds a little bit of body there's no scent it, it's wonderful i ordered three bottles and i'm really glad i did oh my goodness i might need to buy one from you yeah i got it at fat quarter shop so yeah i love that yes okay and then we have something else that's a surprise for chelsea <gasps> what so our friends at handmade is heart made <gasps> are doing some fun sewing themed clothing and they had actually borrowed a quilt from me for a while. And they Stop sent it, it back. And in the box were these two sweatshirts. Oh, my goodness. This one says can't touch this. Yeah. And this one says sewing things. Oh, my goodness. Hold, hold, Our, them, hold them up a little more. They're so adorable. And we love them. These ladies brought us chocolate at Quilt Market. And I thought nothing could top that. But... <laughs> Oh my goodness. We like the chocolate was so good. Yes. I'm going to I'm going to pop up a picture so that you guys know like what oh, you brand. Have the picture? Oh, I have a picture. Okay. We couldn't stop eating it. Yeah. And that night at the hotel there was one piece and we were like, we have to split it. We were obsessed. Yeah, well actually you were gone and I I that's what I did. <laughs> I ate half of it and left her half cuz I was like, she You're we promised so we nice. would share it. Yeah. What? Aren't these so soft and cozy? Oh my goodness, they're so, so soft. Whichever one you want, and I'll take the other one. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. I can't even decide. Oh, we'll decide. We'll after. decide after. Okay. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, I check. Think I be like sure the to blue. check them out. Oh my goodness. Yeah, be sure. We'll put a link to their page, and they're they have a brick and mortar shop and online, I believe. Thank you so yes. much. I love surprises. <laughs> oh, and. Oh, <laughs> there should be a sticker with both of them, but Wait, maybe one got left over there. I think one's in the bag over okay. there. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Perfect. Guys, yeah. I love surprises. Yeah. And I'm just so excited for this year. I feel like <laughs> starting off with Kimberly. Yeah. And this is exciting. We have some exciting things coming this year. And I just hope to make the podcast like... The well, best we, it can we, be. I need to say welcome back. We, did, yes, we actually yeah, sort of forgot back. to. We, we did an episode without you. We're oh, recording this right before that episode is released. So, <laughs> oh, so people, remember, I haven't even seen it. You were home with Ashton sick. Okay. Can I need, yeah. so let me just yeah, explain go ahead and, right now. I'm, I'm very happy I, to be back behind my desk. <laughs> well, I have to say thank you. I'm very appreciative of you. I have been really, really sick. Well, I was sick for about a month. And it was just like sick and then sick again. And then my daughter had the flu and it just was not. That's why I couldn't make it. Right. But I was still kind of You were kind of better, recovering. but she had gotten sick yeah. when and, we. Yeah. yeah. And it was nothing made. It's just this is the time and season where my kids were getting like everything. So we're like totally fine. But I, I did. They both checked in and I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> And Billy, I'm always so appreciative. But Billy, I think people love when you're in, like in the camera <laughs> shot all the time. I, I don't know. I feel like I'm awkward up there because <laughs> I, 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 like I said, I like being back here behind I, the I'm computer. I'm excited since we're filming this before. I haven't seen the recorded episode. I can't wait to watch it yeah. and hear Billy talk about all the quilty things. Yes. <laughs> Well, but you I did, did have your answers to read. Yeah, I did share my answer. I actually scanned it. I didn't even drop it off. I scanned it and emailed it to my yep. mom. I wrote all my answers down. <laughs> and so you are getting the real me. Nothing was like, yes. you know, fabricated. Those are my real answers. So right. no, we're really excited for this year. And I'm, I'm actually glad that we do have a listener question this month to start the year off. Yeah. To go through some of these. So yeah, we should dive in. Yeah, uh, first I have a couple listener quilts oh. to share. And so I will pull these emails up here. One says it's community. Yes. I'm yeah. so excited. We need to be better about me viewing it right before. I know. <laughs> Guys, I I've always, always see seen them. them. Yeah. yeah. Chelsea eventually sees them. Maybe maybe I always 
forget to show I, her before. I'm actually going to walk over there if that's okay. Yeah, come on over. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the, the first one is with the community. It says, hi, Sharon Chelsea. I wanted to thank you for sharing your passion for quilting and your patience in teaching the rest of us. I've listened to every one of your podcasts and bought many of your patterns and fabric lines. I'm including pics of my latest projects, Community, made with One Fine Day by Bonnie and Camille, and Lovely, made primarily with Sincerely Yours. I gave Lovely to my sister-in-law, but selfishly kept Community. It makes me so happy. Thank you also to Billy for doing all that you do to make the podcasts and videos a success. Sincerely yours from Kansas, and this is from Amy. And the pictures have been up, but I need to show Chelsea here real quick. Oh my goodness. Aren't they so cute? <gasps> I love every community quilt. I, I need to make community myself. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. So cute. So thank you, Amy, for sending those in. Those are great. And I don't think you're you're selfish because you, you know, you gave one away <laughs> right. as yeah. well. So don't be so hard on yourself. One fine day is such a good collection. I love that for the community yeah. quilt. We really do. We should do some type of a block swap or something. Yeah. It, that would be fun. Or just make it. Yeah. I, <laughs> right. Just make it. And then we got another one sort of last minute here. We or we got the thumbs up. We could share it. This is from Kathy. No, excuse or me, Carrie. Carrie, 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 not Kathy. Carrie, sorry, Carrie. Uh, it says, hi, Sherry, Merry Christmas to you, and thanks for all the content and inspiration you provide over the year. I completed your 2023 block of the month this year, and I'm about to gift the final product to my niece for Christmas. Here's a photo of it completed using your MF Fabric line. Yeah. Hope you have an enjoyable day. She sent this right before Christmas, Yeah. obviously, but um, on the 25th and looking forward to seeing slash hearing you in 2024. Again, that's from Carrie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that thank turned you. out great. That's a really cool like background. Uh, isn't that yeah. gorgeous? Like an old, older shed or something. Oh, that photograph is just so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. and she's in Australia. Yeah. I didn't even... Yeah, I kind of wonder that. how Hello. old that building is. Well, good deal. So yeah, it is a listener question episode today. So I'll go ahead. Are you guys ready to get I'm into ready. those? Yeah. Okay. And we have the answer to number one because I asked Kimberly this morning. So okay. yes. I didn't actually know the answer until I asked her. Okay, great. And I was going to mention if you guys want to watch the live stream that my mom and sister were on and me, I was holding up quilts. So <laughs> I might face popped up every once in a while yeah but that was on january 19th and i believe they keep all their live streams up on their youtube channel you can go back and watch any older ones and if you did miss that or or want to see it there's also a, a small appearance by my dog yes. in there as well yes. <laughs> so yeah he he sort of jumped in the frame a little bit i people asked for him to come on but is it, the way we had the camera set up it's it, he's he just, wasn't he wasn't, he's not tall enough. He's not a great name. It's just so. kind of this yeah. black cloud yeah. <laughs> you can see you running around in front of the camera. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So the first one, I'm glad you, you got that answer today. Will the special Navy print, this is coming after Kimberly Jolly came on our podcast and we talked about the Moonbeams quilt. So uh, quite a few people were asking, will the special Navy print for Moonbeams for the Moonbeams quilt also be available when the rest of the line releases. It's And this particular person just said that it's just beautiful. And yes, we're happy to say yes. You will yeah. be able to order that exclusively from Fat Quarter Shop. Yes. I believe that navy print. And she said it, it will be there when the yardage ships and that should be by now. So it is so pretty. It is I gorgeous. I cannot even tell you that that was just yeah i'm pretty sure it will sell out so if you are looking for some of that navy you might want to get it now and in talking to fat quarter shop this morning too a lot of stuff they think will sell out yeah so if you had your eye on it or you were thinking about ordering something strawberry lemonade definitely get your orders in yeah for that yeah okay that's good news uh, the next one is what size design boards do you use i think you you know kimberly talked about design boards when she was on, you mentioned them as well. So yeah. there was a couple of people that also asked that, you know, so what size boards do you use? Also, some people asked if you make them. I know there's also places that you can purchase them. Have I given you one? I have one. That I gave and you? I was so inspired by Kimberly during our podcast. I want 50 now. Yeah. Because you can stack them. Right. And I have so many things going on so many places. Right. 
that I use the one, but then I have to remove the things on it because I'm starting something else. I need more, but I'm, I'm a little, I wouldn't say lazy, but I just would rather just purchase them yeah. because I don't have time to make them right now. I made them back in the day, but now yeah. I just buy them from Fat Quarter Shop. So. Well, I'm going to get on and buy some yeah. today then. And I have a couple different sizes. I, I have large ones, medium, small. I, yeah. I love them all. It depends on what size block you're making. Actually, I'm, I'm literally going to order some right after yeah. this. Yeah. Kimberly. <laughs> Just, oh, she's gonna have like this influx of <laughs> yeah there is a tutorial that Lori holt did probably 10 years ago and that's the tutorial i used when i made mine but it's to so make easy mine. to it's yeah to make yours yeah. but it's so easy to buy them and they're they're really reasonable yeah yeah is that tutorial with fat quarter shop or did she do it on, it was on, on her own channel Lori's blog oh, on her blog okay yeah Okay. Oh, so it's not a video. It's it's a blog I, yeah, post. Yeah, and I don't know if she might have done a video later. Whoa. I'm not sure. She this has a YouTube so as well. so interesting, though, where that was, where the tutorials were. They were on blogs. blogs. Yep. And it wasn't... Vi it wasn't okay. video. This, yeah. Guys, the world is changing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, while you guys are answering some other ones, I'll, I'll take a look for it. Yeah, because Lori does have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So the next one is is about sewing machines and it says do you ladies cover your machines at night and if so with what i've i've had a janome machine for two years now that has a retractable thread lever that i frequently forgot to raise back up when i uncover my machine i i am thinking of making a slit in my homemade cover to let the thread lever stay in st an, stay in an upright position yeah. okay yeah, we'll yeah she has the same machine that i do so i know exactly what she's talking about but I, I don't cover my machine at night. I've made a couple really cute sewing machine covers, but I feel like the only time I really put them on is if I'm leaving out of town or something. I'm really bad about not covering it at night. I have to answer this because <laughs> when I read this question, I thought to myself, I have never thought about covering my machine. Yeah. The only reason I would is... Sometimes it gets a little dusty. Right. And, you know, the air conditioners run running, you know, threads are yeah. flying everywhere. But I myself, I feel like I would just get almost annoyed that I'd just be throwing that cover <laughs> off across the room and one extra thing. But it is a great idea. Yeah. You know, I if you're gonna be gone for a while and yeah. you don't want it to get dusty, then yeah. But I yeah. use my machine every so, single yeah, day. That's the thing. Pretty much. So And that's what I'm saying. Like if I randomly sometimes I'm like working on a new design and I'm like, oh, I need to go sew this up and test if this works out. I right. want my sewing machine readily available right. and running and, right. you know. This next one, I, I can help out a little bit on this one as well. So someone commented, what are some words of encouragement or warning you have for aspiring content creators, especially as a young working mom? You've inspired me to start my own YouTube channel featuring Sew With Me style videos. I feel there isn't enough out there like that, like there is in gardening and makeup. That's from Kathy. Yeah, I thought this was a great question too. Yeah. I have a couple answers to, or do you want to go first? Can or? I go first? Sure. Because I love that she said, what are some words of encouragement or warning you have for aspiring content creators? You are allowed to create what you want to create and take ownership of that. And I hope that that is enough words of encouragement in this creative world that you should be able to create what you want to create and um, be proud of yourself for it. So I think that's awesome, first of all. The other thing I thought of when I read this was I almost wish, Billy, that you could do a video for aspiring content creators kind of with some of the what you have and what you started with. I think a lot of people have questions like that if they wanted to start a YouTube. Like you have so much knowledge about that. I almost wish like we could like interview. Like a basic. Yeah, like just a what basic you one. Need to, to get started. Yes, mm -hmm. because I think a lot of people do. I feel like you have way more knowledge about that because you have to get started somehow. Those were a couple of my thoughts. But yeah. if you want to start a YouTube, you should YouTube start a, channel. a YouTube. A YouTube. <laughs> If you want to start YouTube, a YouTube <laughs> channel, you should do so and just 
put everything you have into it. Yeah. And also kudos to you if you're doing it all yourself, because oh, we could I not know. do this without Billy. We're so grateful for his. He does the filming, the editing, the uploading. Really, all I do is I give him links, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. but, but. And he's so on top of it. He, he he messages me, hey, I need this. I need this. I need this. Yeah. And things I didn't even think of. But one time he left the camera because I had to film something for you. Do you remember this? I have mm-hmm. a mashup video I made of it because oh. it's so funny. I should post it. <laughs> and it we were like so proud of ourselves. And it was a ton of work. But even at Quilt Market. Well, and at Quilt Market, you guys yes, did it. Yes, and the yeah. whole time. Yeah, I, we, we actually filmed, we, didn't we? <laughs> so. We filmed and we got it done and it looked amazing besides mom's finger in the camera. Yeah. I really wished Billy was at Quilt Market, but we we got it done. Yeah. We did it. Yeah. So I had a couple of people, a piece, a people, couple of people. <laughs> I have a couple of pieces of advice. And actually people, I know why I said that, because I actually had people who reached out to me when I was beginning and who would just randomly out of the blue email me or call me and give me suggestions. And I loved that. So I hope that you have a support network that can do that for you. But my number one thing that I wrote down was worry about consistency over quantity. So I always tell people, whether you're starting an Instagram or starting a blog, once a week, be consistent. And then if you can add more, go to twice a week, you know, but it's, it's being consistent over worried about doing 25 things right now. So I, I feel like that's a really good piece of advice that I got early in my blogging career. And I think I had to do it because I, if, if I hadn't been consistent, I wouldn't still be blogging. So it's so important. Uh, I just wrote that down. Oh, thanks. And then the other thing is, if possible, if you can look ahead, at least for your week, but preferably for your month or your quarter, it is just going to take all of that off, uh, all of that worry away. Even if you don't end up doing what you plan, if you just have you know, four things written down for every month for the next three months. You can change it. That's no big deal. But just having those ideas, that will generate new ideas and you will never run out of ideas. So your calendar is so on point. Mom will be like, Chelsea, you got to put, you got to schedule this in the calendar. (laughs) And I'm like stressed out because I can't think past noon tomorrow. (laughs) It's driving me insane. But I change but things it's so all the helpful. time. Yeah. Too. I change them all the time. I give my permission to change it. But just, I feel like having it there is just going to give you the peace of mind to keep going. So, yeah. Yeah. And then I know, Billy, you have some thoughts too. Yeah. No, I think the both of what I would echo both of what you said consistency. I think starting, there's two things. One, you want to. Before you launch, I think it's important to be as prepared as possible. You're always going to learn more things, but it can be overwhelming just even on the, you know, aside from actually filming and doing what you love and and what you want to create. And then you're like, okay, great. I did that. But now I got to edit this and upload it for certain file size. Oh, I need a thumbnail. Oh, I need a description. Oh, I need. So try your best. If anyone wants to get into it to try to prepare to where you have an idea of what you're going to do once you do have your content. I think that's important because then all that other stuff can be quite overwhelming. That way you can be like, okay, I got that down or at least as as down as I think I can at this point. Now I can focus on creating what I like. And from that also, I mean, especially we're lucky. I'm, I will never, I've told this to other people who ask me what I do. I say, well, yeah, our YouTube channel grew and it sort of took off and it allows me to do do that now. But we're lucky because my mom had been blogging for 10 years prior. So there was an audience already there. And then as we started doing doing it more consistently, it just naturally grew. So if, if you don't have anything prior to that, it, it's going to take a little bit to grow. So you have to do it because you like it and you want to keep doing it. Even if it's a very small community at first, that's, that may be all you need to keep doing what you, what you need to do. So you want to do, be you as things grow, then I think it's more important to, you still want to be you, but you also, you have a audience now. So you want to 
hear what they have to say because you're sort of growing the community together at that point. But you you never want to lose what what you you never want to not like what you're doing, I guess. Because right. if if people are doing it because they feel they have to, then that that loses the magic, I guess, of everything. So I don't know. That, no, I love there's, that. There's that, but but yeah. So those are two things I would say. Yeah. I Can like I just that. say something? Mm-hmm. The fact that Billy just gave us a 2024 headline be you <laughs> i'm gonna make a t-shirt that billy can wear that says be you <laughs> well i mean it's because to me i mean youtube is this conglomerate of i learned to do everything by watching youtube and then in turn i've helped us create a youtube channel and everything you know it's like it recycles but no matter what it, it doesn't matter if you're watching a sports thing any types of quilts or crafting um, cooking. News, it, cooking. My husband uh, watches all, yeah. cooking. Yeah, all these. There's any type <laughs> oh of category you go into. You, you whoever's the the successful channels, the successful creators, stay true to like who they are because that's what started them off in the beginning. You know what I mean? So anyway, yeah, love yeah. that. Okay. Next one. So Ch- this is a question for Ooh, Chelsea. This is a good one. Your those quilts that we showed. Yes. We only showed about half of them, and we will. Yeah be back to, to show the rest. So uh, quite a few people actually have asked, have any of those quilts that you showed that when you were a beginner in that box, have you got any of them quilted? And when might we see the video of the rest, rest of them? <laughs> so this is a really, really good question because I needed to open that box. I thought for some reason, I just thought those were horrid quilts. They weren't as bad as I thought. So no, none of them are quilted yet, but I have talked to two of my quilters who are ready to take them on. So the first half, I just need to get backings made for them, but I think I'm just going to use some of my wide backings. Oh, good idea. It's going to be so much easier. I'm going to be ready to go. Good idea. Yeah. That would be fun if you at least got one quilted before you showed the second half of the box. Oh, yes. Wouldn't that be fun? Then you yeah. could show, hey, here's a quilted I know. one. I need, I need to message Vicky and yeah. And it was shortly after we did that video that you sort of hit your little month of sickness. my month of sickness. <laughs> yes. I have been telling people, I'm like, man, like that really set you back. Plus Christmas, I really wanted to take the time, even though I was sick the whole time. Yeah. The time off with with my kids for Christmas, they were on break. So now that they're back in school, yeah. But they weren't, it was really good for me. I was really nervous and it was good to see they weren't as awful as I made them out to be. And that's okay. Yeah, that was the main feedback we got is that Chelsea, these aren't that bad. Yeah, Yeah. and I don't know why I was so hypercritical, but I just have to tell all the listeners, you guys really were helpful with that. I didn't want to show those. I didn't even want to open that box ever again. I was happy to let that box simmer in my closet for 50 years. And no, you guys really encouraged me. So I really appreciated that. I would, yeah. Yeah. I, in fact, I watched that video Did too. You? Well, I think I had to watch it to get the links for your yeah. patterns. And I loved it. I was like, this is so fun. I loved how you were sitting down in your studio. Wasn't it homey? Yes, it was homey. I loved it. I told Billy, I said, we should do more of this in my sewing room. We don't do it often enough. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes we do videos with me in my sewing room, but I'm sitting behind my cutting table. And I feel like I loved how you were just Sitting. sitting. Yeah. And nothing was blocking you. Yeah. You should do the same in your little swivelly. My little chair. Yes, you should. Yeah. <laughs> little update from earlier in the podcast. We have breaking news. Oh. Uh, no, is it was Lori Holt's tutorial board. Was it, is it the Be In My Bonnet? Yep. Or yes! tutorial board, design yep. board. Okay, so there is a tutorial on her YouTube channel. Okay. I'll, oh. I'll link that in the description. Okay. It says it's the Be In My Bonnet Go, design so she- board tutorial. It's about 13, it's 13 minutes long and it was uh, about three years, three years ago. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes sense that she would film a video for that because it was such yeah. a popular blog post. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, the next one here, um, someone wrote in and said, you have mentioned strike offs in previous videos and podcast episodes. And just simply that she was unaware of what they are. So go ahead and explain yeah. what yeah. strike offs are. Uh, before we finalize a fabric collection, the mill sends us these strike offs, and it's basically just cuts of fabric, like maybe, maybe a, a fat fatty, quarter, fat yeah. quarter, 
size of a hundred SKUs, maybe all different shades of the colors that we might want in the collection, just different variations. And they all have a number on them. And we go through these strike offs and we narrow it down to anywhere from 32 to 36 to, you know, 40 SKUs, whatever. Yeah and pick our favorites. And there might be two shades of green, but one might look better with the overall collection. This way, when we send them back, the mill knows we're printing these 36. We're not going to print all the strike-offs, but the strike-offs gives us so much variety of what we designed initially, what we sent in to narrow down the actual, the finalized fabrics. Right. And then also just a note on that, we look at those strike offs some and then they have to we have to send them back yeah. to Moda, but then we we sometimes are able to get them all back, even the ones that we rejected. Yeah. And sometimes some of them are pretty good. We just didn't there just wasn't enough room for all of for them. All of them. Yeah. But we actually we love that process and it, it takes a few days when we get the strike offs. We will usually kind of do an initial we fold them, we put, we group them by color and we try to make decisions. And then we also group them by print and make decisions. And then we have this pile of no way. Yeah. And then we actually, usually I go home. We usually do it at Chelsea's house. Yeah. I usually go home and the next day she will play around with it, take some pictures. Make it into a bundle. Make it into a bundle. Yeah. And then I'll go back and we'll usually just look at it one more time and then... yeah. They're off and they're sent back to Moda and that's final. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And what she means by we always start with color first. Mm -hmm. We want to get the color right. I want to know how much I have in each color. And because I don't want seven of purple, but then yeah, I want it. Sometimes you do have that, uh -huh. but you, you, you might have just two oranges in yeah. it. But it's a good, we want a good balance. And then we do it by print because... I like the prints to be even. I don't want nine prints of one and two two of another print. Right. I want it to be nice and even. So there's a lot of work that goes into it. And a lot of times we really just need it to cook overnight. Yeah. And then we feel like refreshed, new pair of eyes on it. Yeah. And, and yes, the collection that we're sewing with now that we can't talk about, we actually had a really hard time getting oh. rid of prints with this. Uh, sometimes there is just immediately 20 things that go into a pile that no way. With this cult, with this particular group, we we didn't do that. Remember? We could have had 42 prints in this bundle, but we, we knew we had couldn't. 50. We could, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's but, a process. But sometimes less is more. And I always mm -hmm. say this I don't need. You know, some prints might be, you might have two prints that are medium and gray. I don't need two prints that are a medium size and gray. I right. need a large, a small, right. you know, a medium, yeah. you know, of like a basic or a floral. So those are also things that play into it. It's just, we have gotten better at it over time. Yeah, I think and, so. But it is still hard when there are so many good strike-offs that we, that you have to omit some and you miss yeah. them. And this is also a place where we compromise too. Yeah. <laughs> so... I'll say, hey, I'll I want you, the blue. I want this, but you know, you can have that if I can have this, and yeah. then we'll take something else out to make it. Yeah. yeah. What I love about mom, though, is when I am designing a collection, I'm very, very hard on myself. And when I send it to mom and she reviews it, she'll she'll be like, "This is awesome. This is great. <laughs> Maybe add this or add this." But every time I think this is the worst thing I've ever designed, mom is like, "Chelsea, this is." fantastic and i think it's just because i'm staring at these things so much right. that i just get in my head and i think it's awful and she's yeah. the best because she <laughs> has just a great look at it well i mean what i say i just think her designs just keep getting better yeah yeah and i do want to know that, that she is very on she would be honest with me so i'm always like oh wow you know hey <laughs> thank you Okay, I think we that was like the whole encyclopedia version on <laughs> strike offs. Yeah, okay. More yeah, than okay. you wanted. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the next one is from a self proclaimed newbie quilter. She says, I'm a newbie learning to quilt. You use some terms I didn't understand in a video. I'm not sure which video she met, uh, was referring to, but she said, I know what a fat quarter is, but what's a fat eighth? 
when you, you were sorting, you sorted out low volume fabrics and what does that mean? So I know there's there's quite a few different places we can send her also to you know, find out what the, these are. We just did a podcast, it was episode 93, so it was 10 episodes ago, a few, about three months ago, that we did a thing all about pre-cuts. I'll continue here though. She says, I have a huge amount of fabric, some purchased, a lot gifted to me, but I have I have to figure out how to organize it because it's looking like a scene from that show, Hoarders. <laughs> I've been given a lot of fabric scraps. Thanks for your help, and that's uh, from Rhonda. So if you want to go over a couple of those things, quick answers, and then we can also point you in the direction of some more help as well. Yeah. First, I want to start off, a fat quarter is 18 inches by 22 inches and a fat or 21. Eight, 20 or 21. Yeah. We'll say 21 to be fabric, safe. Yeah. 21 yeah. to be safe. Fat eighth is nine inches by 21 inches. Yeah. So it's it's half. It's of half a, of that. So fat eighth right. is yes. half of a fat quarter. And, and a regular yeah. eighth yard would be four and a half inches by, by 42 inches. Yeah. So the benefit of having a fat eighth a lot of times is if you need to cut pieces that are bigger than four and a half inches. Yes you have that nine inches of width. Yeah. And I actually, we both talked about this. We actually design a lot of fat eighth patterns. Yeah. Both of us. They're they're very useful. Yeah. Fat eighth. And as far as low volume, mom answered this this morning in the live stream, but it's anything that is not, you, you described it as something that is not too busy. Or overwhelming. Or overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. So for example, you can, this is a print. All my centers. Yeah, and I feel like they don't overwhelm the block. Yeah. The block doesn't have to be done with a solid here. It can use this low volume print that adds a little something extra but doesn't take over. I always call it texture mm -hmm. to the quilt. Yes. It is still has that low volume background, like per se Bella 200, but it still adds something to it without overpowering it. Right. So there's still design in it. Yes. And so I will take those and separate all those in a bin. And that's something I might start with. And then you could even start with different colors, any shades of reds, any shades, of, you know, to start organizing it, you know, or by collection. If you have a lot of scraps from specific collections. That's what I wrote down too. When I was making notes last night on the questions, I said the easiest way to organize is by color first. Yeah. Just take everything and, you know, get bins or boxes or plastic bags to start with and red, orange, yellow. Yeah, it's the easiest. There's a video titled Tips for Building a Fabric Stash. And this was a few years ago uh -huh. uh, that, that my mom did. I think that might be something also to help. I, I believe in that video my mom goes through and and sort of separates different types of fabric. I think you talk about low volumes in there. Um, so that's one I, I will make a note here to link is tips for building a fabric stash for this listener. I think that might be a good one to go through. Yeah. There's also another one, actually, I just found a better one. How to, You could watch that one, but there's also one that says how to sort scraps, also yeah. about three years ago. Yeah. So those are a couple videos I think that would, would help with, with this question. And I'm wondering if she actually the how to sort scraps video might have been the one she was referring to. Maybe it was. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the next question here, hello, Sherry, Chelsea, and Billy. I enjoy watching the a quilting life podcast on YouTube. The interview with Kimberly Jolly was fun. Made me laugh a lot. Such fun energy from you all question regarding making, making a quilt specifically for the purpose of raising funds for a cause like Kimberly has done for make a wish. Have either of you done that for a cause you believe in? I plan to do do that sometime in the future. I also plan to make small quilts that I will be donating to local charity, charitable efforts for children. Quilts really are a true expression of love and caring that can touch multiple generations. Take care in 2024. And this is from Carol from South Dakota. Yeah, and we actually did this a few years ago. Remember yeah. the quilt we did with Kimberly in 2020 with Summer Sweet? Mm -hmm. And we actually sent, we actually each made half of the blocks and then I put it together and we actually sent it to Fat Quarter Shop and I yeah. think they quilted it and donated it. Donated it. Yeah. So we, yeah. we have done that before. We love that. We love sewing along every year with Kimberly's Make-A-Wish quilt sew along. Last year, 
I made it with our Bountiful Blooms collection. The quilt happened to be called Bountiful. It was yeah, the Bountiful. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, but and this year it is with our Strawberry Lemonade collection, and we're both going to be sewing along. Yes. So yeah, I I love doing that, and there have been different times when I've donated. I remember when all those storms hit the East Coast, and I sent a quilt for that, and. You know, I've uh, just when something hits me, I'll do that. And or beach cities, yeah. I've you donated quilts, donated uh, more than a dozen quilts to yeah. the Beach Cities Quilt Guild, who does a fabulous job. They of, are spot on, they donate yeah. so many quilts. And I was really, really inspired, yeah, by the efforts that were made on their part for that. Yeah, we and I just felt so good about giving them my quilts because I knew that they would take the time and find yeah. good places for them. Awesome. So the next one here says, hi, Sherry and Chelsea and Billy. Thank you so much for everything you share. I always learn so much from you and truly appreciate your generosity. Perhaps the following wonderings about sizing up quilts would translate into a Q&A question that other followers would be interested in as well. I'm wondering if you and Chelsea have any suggestions of quilt patterns that would easily lend themselves to sizing up to a queen and especially king size. I did successfully just adapt Chelsea's magnolia pattern into a queen with seashore drive, and it is beautiful. I've been wanting to ask this for a while, and after seeing your video and blog post about the new 16-inch block of the month pattern this morning, I started wondering, could using 16-inch blocks, maybe the 2024 ones, help make a king-size quilt be more easily accomplishable as well as proportionally pleasing? Uh, why don't we start with that? And then there is one yeah. more. Yeah, I love that. I, I yeah. definitely think a 16 inch block is going to be, you know, I have a king size quilt that's made with eight inch blocks, but I also have a no. king size quilt that's made with 24 inch blocks. And that 24 inch block quilt went together a lot faster. Oh, yeah. Than, so yeah, and 16 inches is a good size for yeah. a king, I feel like. What, yeah. For that, would you have, how much would you have to add on for like with, cause that's 12 blocks obviously, right? Yeah. You'll just, and, and I hate to give an example because today mattresses are so different and they have different heights. Yeah. So you really just need to measure your, your mattress. mattress and, and the height, the height the... and how far, and some people like them to hang down more yeah. and less. So really you need to just figure your out preference. your, what you need for the width and the length and then put the blocks in yeah. like that. And then from there, you adjust the borders and, yeah. and inner borders or whatever you need to do. Right. Because you can add more blocks, like with her magnolia quilt. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure you made additional blocks, but then you can also make do the borders, borders a little bit bigger too. Yeah. Blocks and borders is the easiest way. I feel like if you like a specific pattern, that's what I would do. Yeah. I would usually keep the sashing pretty much the same. Oh, I would too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'll... She has another second part to it. And she said, what about setting blocks on point? This just occurred to me because I love how the January block looks turned on point. And she finishes, thanks so much again for all, all your help and yours and Chelsea and Billy's friendly presence in my quilting life. Aww. Best, Rebecca. Thank you. <laughs> I think yeah. the same thing. I yeah. think just add, you can, even if it's on point, you can add more blocks. Well, your quilt is always going to be bigger on point than yeah. it is straight set. So that was a really good observation. Yeah, because I have some patterns on point and some people don't want to make them on point. They want to do a straight set, which is fine, but then that ends up smaller. So yes. So yeah, on point is yeah. another way to go to add size to your yeah. to your quilt. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so the... The last question here, and I sort of made a mistake, but we'll ask you guys the question first. So my mom, and may, maybe you go ahead. And, what what exactly did you do on your Instagram that that got these responses from listeners? Oh, I just asked a question in my stories, and okay. I just said, "What is the ba the biggest quilting challenge you are facing right now?" Okay. Oh. So my mom had sent me some of these responses. They are, are currently. I'm looking into. The, camera right now which is my phone well those are on my phone so i do have a few off the top of my head that i remember that were were frequent flyers but why don't you guys first answer what is your what is the biggest challenge you're facing right now in your quilting life and i can add some uh your responses to that as well 
Mine's going to be a little bit different than those responses because I've seen all the responses. Okay. My biggest challenge right now is actually getting to my sewing room because we have had so much computer work to do as of the last couple weeks. We had all of these deadlines for new patterns and... That's so funny. uh, Some other things. And so I have just been stuck on my computer. In fact, this afternoon... After I finish my blog post for tomorrow, I can I think I can sew. And I am so excited to be able to sew. It's been a couple days. So that is so funny that she said that because that's my answer. I just told mom before we started today, I just I was down in the kitchen and I said, I just got all this computer work done and all I want to do is sew. Right. I want to sit down and sew and have my little snacks and <laughs> And, and just so, and that's been the hardest thing for me is getting in my sewing room because I have not even just that computer work, but I have had all my strawberry lemonade pre-cuts arrive. I had new fabric right. arrive. So my sewing room looks crazy right now. <laughs> it looks absolutely insane. And I have one more thing to finish up on the computer today. Oh. And then I get to sew. Yes. And that's all I care about right now is sewing because I... It makes me happy. Yeah. So a few of the responses, I saw one that quite a few people said was binding. Yeah, oh. I, I saw that. And we, we do have a couple videos for binding. Mm-hmm. Now, if it's uh, good, I'm glad you clarified that because if it's sitting down and binding, I have been having my mom bind my quilts <laughs> in trade of photography yeah. for years now. Yeah. Because I just don't have the time with my three kids and their schedules and yeah. And then another one, I think I saw a few people, it, which is sort of similar to what you guys said, but they're just to find the time to quilt, Yeah, you know, and it, it, I mean, obviously your business is involved quilting, but it's a computer side. So you're like, I just want to yeah. sew with you know, other people who have other jobs, you know, maybe it's just hard to make time for that as well. So I, I actually, every time people have talked about how they wake up super early to sew, Kimberly does. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that's crazy. I'm sleeping in. And then this morning I had to be up at five (laughs) so I could make it in time to the live stream. Right. And my dad went to the house and helped the kids. And I thought to myself, if I woke up at five every day, I could so for X amount of hours. And <laughs> and and we both talked about it. We were like, yeah, yeah. but we like to sleep. <laughs> so, well, think about it. right now, we're about to wrap up this episode. I and know. this is about when we're usually getting started. Getting or, started. It's not even know, 11 right. o'clock. We're yeah. halfway through it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, that's why I know I'm going to get to sew today. Yeah. But yes, I, w- I didn't wake up till six this morning, but w- we had to do it early for the, we, had, we were on central yeah. time zone for the live stream. Yeah. So, and I thought the same thing. I thought, why don't I get up at six every day? I mean, it's pitch black here. Possibilities at six are endless. But I could always, yeah, I could always go sew even if it's dark. Yeah, or even know? start some of your other stuff earlier, like right, cause, like the little household chores. And, yeah. yeah, my kids were shocked this morning. They were like, "What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Why are you awake? Why are you awake so early?" <laughs> my yeah. kids are very independent, so yeah. they're normally like up making breakfast and. <laughs> No, I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe it's a new thing you guys can, uh, you know, try to start. Try to start. New like, year, Whatever new you're me. currently yeah. <laughs> waking up at, like wake up two hours before your kids, Chelsea, and <laughs> get going at, then take a nap when they go to school and then yeah. wake up and I don't know. I've oh. heard of that. If you want to get up earlier, just start moving your alarm clock just 15 minutes each day. Really? And then... Yeah. It's just like then your body just then knows. Then your body like, will oh, okay. slowly move into the new time. Oh, my goodness. It's like sleep training yes. all yeah. over again. Yeah. Yes. Pretty much. Okay. So we do have – thank you for everyone that sent those questions yeah. in. They're a great batch this time. Yeah. And um, I have a couple new podcast reviews from Apple Podcasts. So I'll pop those up right now and read those. So this review says, bringing joy – your podcast brings joy to my day. Thank you, Sherry, Chelsea, and Billy for giving up your time to share your love of quilting, organization, and your family with all of us. I look forward to new episodes. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. I am glad it brings you joy. And I know, I mean, the majority of the people that, that I'll say watch this podcast do watch on YouTube, but I always, and I've said this before, I love audio versions of podcasts. And so to those of you that do just listen, 
you know, we really appreciate you guys listening to it and, and hopefully that it brings the same, you know, entertainment value and, and information to you as well. So here's one more. It says, love this podcast. One of my favorite podcasts to listen to. I feel like part of their lovely fa- family, entertaining, mm-hmm. informative, funny, and interesting. Hope you make the 100,000 mark for 2024. I hope we do too. I so hope we thank do too. you so much. I really thought that this year. I thought yeah. we gotta hit 100. It would be so cool. But I also love that uh, they said funny because we <laughs> yeah. love some good comedy, <laughs> comedic relief here in this podcast. Yeah. I'm 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 so grateful because I feel like I really am a silly person. So I feel like I've been able to kind of show my true my true self here. Well, and it's also good because. The amount of laughing that happens on this, if if no one else was laughing at all, then it'd be like, oh, we think we're funny, but no one else thinks it's funny. <laughs> That's true. So they think they're good to so know, funny. It's good to hear someone else thinks that <laughs> yes, there is some you. humor That's in this true. as well. Yeah. I didn't good. think about that. That would be embarrassing if everyone's like, they're not funny. <laughs> yeah. I thought about the, this morning on the live stream. Kimberly did uh, let us tell her viewers where they can find us, and we made sure to mention the Quilting Life YouTube, so maybe yes. we'll get some more subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> Help us to that 100,000. Oh, my goodness. This was such a great Thank podcast. You. I'm happy to be back. Yes. <laughs> After it's so good sick. to have you back. I yeah, mean, me Billy's too. great. Yeah, Billy. <laughs> yeah. Billy's like, oh, thank you. So, but oh. yeah, our next episode is February 12th. Yeah, in February. We're the day, The day after the Super Bowl. Oh, my oh. goodness. <laughs> okay. <gasps> Things. Wow. Okay. And the Super Bowl's in Las Vegas, so yep. we're feeling really kind of cool right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So thank you for being here with us today. We're just really excited about this year and all the things that we have coming, and we're even more grateful that you're all here. So thanks so much for stopping by. Bye.